Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Antriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Ba. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, race and religion being used for politics, says PM. Sodelpa to solve the internal bickering during AGM. A new budget to continue building on opportunities created. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. Prime Minister Varanga Banimarama says those spreading mischievous lies need to wake up and stop using other races and religion as a campaigning tool ahead of the elections. He adds his government has proof that some political parties are using race and religion to divide the country. While opening the Bar Provincial Council meeting this morning, the Prime Minister stated that these lies are creating division amongst Fijians. Philippe Naikaso has more. The Prime Minister not mincing his words as he set the record straight on a number of issues which many have been speculating about. There is no chance whatsoever of a Chinese takeover in Fiji. We owe China only 10.6% of our total national debt, and they are not in the position to take over anything. There is no chance of a Muslim takeover in Fiji as well. Less than 5% of Fijians are Muslims, so they are not in a position to take over either. And Fijian Muslims, like every other citizen, are an integral part of our nation. Biden Marama hitting out at Sadalpa for using the China-Fiji relationship for their political gain. In the case of Sadalpa, some of its politicians are going around the Vanua telling people that the government has sold Fiji to the Chinese. In fact, one of the Sadalpa MPs has been passing around an ancient photograph of Australian Aborigines in chains and saying that will soon be the fate of Fijians. We are actually being asked in government if it is true that we have sold Fiji to the Japanese. Bani Marama told those present that the majority of politicians nowadays are only looking after their interests. In the past, politicians would fight to bring people together as one and build our nation. These were politicians like Eddie Patel, Sidi Koya and James Madhavan. They were different from politicians today. He also claims political parties like Sodalpa and the National Federation Party are not fit to run the country as they use religion and ethnicity for campaigning. As well as having no idea how to run a modern economy, no vision of Fiji's place in the world. We have evidence that both Sodalpa and the NFP are trying to sow division and exploit ethnicity and religion for their own purposes. The Prime Minister adding that some are even dividing the Indo-Fijian community by talking about the basis of their ancestors and whether they were from North or South India. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC News. Meanwhile, a number of issues were raised during a Talano session with the Prime Minister following the opening of the Bar Provincial Council meeting. Philippe Nekasa reports the issues range from water, roads and village relocation. Representatives from the Bar Province today took the time out to raise issues affecting them. The roads in our village where the trucks usually used to transport the gravel, well, uh, that road these trucks are using, it's like uh, they're running on the highway. And we worried about the children who usually use these roads. Where's the LTA? Please look into this issue. A request was also made to build a health center in Avala village in Ba. Uh, we are requesting for a hospital to be built in uh, Navala. Uh, the only thing left is for the approval for the land to be given where the hospital can be built. Other issues which the Prime Minister could not answer were referred to representatives from the different ministries who were present at the meeting. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Sadelpa members who are against some of the policies introduced by the party can bring it up during their annual general meeting in Namoli Lotoka this weekend. Party leader Sitiveni Rambuka made this statement while speaking at a party press conference earlier today. Ali Kimbia has more. So Delpa leader Sitiveni Rambuka, while admitting that there is dispute among some senior members of the party, says this can be discussed at the AGM. Uh, we allow for dissent and uh, we are a very democratic party. 
And if those who are uh, against uh, whatever is going on can bring it up to the General Assembly. Some major changes will also be made within the party at the meeting. And uh, it was also in our meeting notice is the uh, amendment to the uh, party constitution to allow for an additional uh, vice president. Proposed candidate Linda Tamboya says that the AGM is a landmark achievement as for the first time party supporters will also take part in the meeting. Uh, it is important uh, that uh, since we've signed the Memorandum of Understanding after that General Assembly in December that uh, our supporters know that they will um, be welcome and be part of this um, annual general meeting. The AGM will also be an opportune time for Sedelpa party supporters to meet some of the proposed candidates who will be contesting the upcoming general election. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. On the eve of the 2018-2019 national budget announcement, Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama says the budget will again focus on the opportunities already created for Fijians. Bainimarama says while he can't disclose the finer details, he can say that the budget will continue to focus on infrastructure development that has transformed our nation's prospects. Rachel Nart has more. The Prime Minister says the budget will see a range of initiatives that will build on the opportunities provided in previous budgets. We've delivered all sorts of new projects in our urban centres and the rural hinterland, plus the general improvements to infrastructure all around us. Banyarama says the budget will focus on basic services. More of what we have always done, not handouts, but leg-ups, because at the core of our philosophy is the importance of empowerment. Meanwhile, Sudalpa leader Siti Venirambuka claims tomorrow's budget will favor the Fiji First government going into elections. We anticipate a sweeper. Uh, government's attempt to uh, give us a good budget before the elections in the hope that they will retain or gain some uh, ground support. The 2018-2019 national budget announcement will be made tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Rachel Nahr, FBC News. A New Zealand yacht captain and two crew members have been arrested by Savasavu police following the discovery of ammunition on the yacht. The New Zealand-based yacht Way Power was berthed at the Savasavu Bay when it was searched by police and customs officers yesterday. The search led to the seizure of a large stash of different ammunition types. Fiji Revenue and Customs Chief Executive Vishwanath Das says the successful seizure of the ammunition shows yet again they take their responsibility of profiling all travel and transit at our borders seriously. 139 Commissioners for Oaths and Justice of Peace who took their oaths this afternoon were reminded to act honestly and to remain impartial. Among these, 12 were sworn in as Commissioners while others were sworn in as Justice of Peace. Pranita Prakash reports out of this, 127 JPs, 57 are also district officers. 63-year-old Samisoni Waletu of Lambasa says there is a huge demand for justice of peace service in his line of business. All the time they come to my office, we also demand this service. So I do audit their books of account and I give them the statement, financial statement. But the problem is, after all, they demand for this service, somebody to, as a JP. District Advisory Councillor Minel Aryan says now she will be able to assist fellow Fijians. I can sign few things, but not as much as I suppose what you can do for JP. Chief Justice Anthony Gates had a strong message for those who were sworn in. We have elections coming up. We have had some involved in political parties as commissioners or JPs, even some MPs. For my part, I would rather keep the two functions separate. In your role, you must be impartial. Justice Gates also reminded those sworn in today to keep records of the work they do. Appointments are now usually limited to three years at a time. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Still to come, FNPF to credit member accounts this weekend. And drivers to receive SMS alerts for pending fines. Stay with us.
bula ne van go mala kai le loma go ngai na kasi ondo va rong na mbula fep na bando ai na sere o ya o vasit sai sai lambasa ya ondo talita na varong na mbula fm na bando ai na sere go ya vet meli a ko na tau no hi na toka talita kina na varong na mbula fm na bando ai na sere e wa na mbula na mbula fm na bando ai na sere na mbula na van go fani na tau ne go singa toka ke to ondo talita ka na mbula fm na bando ai na sere Bula FM number 2 in the city. Six point three five percent annual interest will be credited to three hundred and sixty five thousand Fiji National Provident Fund members on Saturday. Chief Executive Chauchi Koroi says this amounts to about two hundred and eighty nine million dollars. Savara Tambo reports. The FNPF says it is important for members to understand that the 6.35% interest credited depends entirely on the balance of their account. Interests are credited on a daily basis. Uh, it's different from the past where the interest is only credited to your opening balance during the year, before the, the opening balance for the year. So like your contributions during the year, there were no credit, no interest accrued to you. But that has changed now. Chao Chikoroi says interest declared should be reassuring for the members as it continues to reflect the fund's strong financial position following the reforms. The announcement has been welcomed by the members. I'm really happy about it. At least the members uh, know that the contributions that are coming in uh, are getting more interest every year. I think it's a really good initiative and uh, hopefully something uh, FNPF is doing about it and I think the rest of the members of Fiji Tour will be happy. The fund is encouraging members to register on its various e-services channels to check their account balances. Savera Tambua, FBC News. Local business operators interested in exporting and setting up businesses in New Zealand hope the annual conference tomorrow will give them some concrete ideas. The 31st Fiji New Zealand Business Council Conference aims to help both countries open up to new ideas that can help their economies to grow. Aksita Tale reports. The Fiji New Zealand Business Council will use the opportunity tomorrow to see how they can get better access to the New Zealand markets. A lot has been spoken about recently in terms of uh, openness to trade and uh, keeping tariffs and things in mind. So. Um, I think that's where the focus would be. With the theme Fiji moving towards 2020 and beyond, local businesses hope to tap into new sectors. We've always had our agricultural uh, exports uh, for, for the Fiji-based uh, diaspora that's in New Zealand. Um, uh, there definitely would be some opportunities in, in, uh, in uh, logging and things like that that we can look at as well. New Zealand Fiji Business Council President Chandar Sen says the ball is now in their court. We are beyond business partners. We are family. We are inseparable. This would have to be one of the best business relationships in the Pacific. Tax reforms, border security, medical tourism, cybercrime and climate resilience will top discussions at the conference tomorrow. Akusita Tali, FBC News. Persons with disability will now become more independent as the Spinal Injury Association received assistance worth over $1 million today. In the last seven years, the association, in partnership with the Vodafone ATH Foundation and the British High Commission, has bought a total of 25 containers of mobility devices worth $40 million. Kritika Kumar reports. The 14th shipment from PhysioNet UK will improve the lives of Fijians with disability. It will allow you know, persons with disability to actually be participators, you know, to participate in programs you know, that is done by communities, uh, to be part of their family uh, you know, in the activities that, they, uh, that is happening out there. The mobility devices will improve the lives of many who will be able to make a meaningful contribution. Projects such as this make us proud to be associated with it and help raise awareness about the work that is being done in Fiji in support of people with disabilities. We acknowledge the tremendous work done by volunteers, especially the team PhysioNet from UK, and the commitment with the collection of equipment, managing the donation process, the refurbishment, the packing, and of course, shipping to Fiji. The latest consignment has mobility and medical appliances, which includes wheelchairs, 
working frames and assorted medical consumables. Pritika Kumar, FBC News. Drivers will now receive reminders about their fines via text messages. This is after the Land Transport Authority and Vodafone Fiji signed a SMS agreement today to help drivers pay their fine on time and avoid accumulation. Anna Ravula reports. Drivers will now have no more excuses in paying fines on time. Basically, if a driver or a vehicle owner has been captured by one of our red <coughs> light speed cameras, the respective person will receive a text message immediately to notify them to visit the nearest LTE office to clear their fines. Maharaj says sometimes drivers are unaware of their infringements, which leads to late payments. Previously, what used to happen was that our red light stroke speed cameras would capture an offence and the vehicle owner would be sent a letter by a post and often the customers would miss deadline by the time they received the traffic infringement notice. However, with this new system in place, drivers or offenders will have no excuse that they were not notified. The core purpose of this is to provide information to the, uh, to the customers of LTA, in this case uh, drivers who are offending. The new initiative by LTA and Vodafone is expected to begin next Monday. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. And sports later with Jamie. FIFA World Cup competition intensifies as eliminations are about to start. But up next is Rachel with business. Thanks, Amrita. Good evening and coming up after the break. Finances improve for Sugar Research Institute. And in growing Fiji, work to improve roads in Suva City continues. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Jenny Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coraco, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote, I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outrigger, Singatoka. In business tonight, the Sugar Research Institute says their financial position has improved due to the stakeholders meeting their obligations. The Institute says the government has played a significant role in their financial growth. It says the financial support and bonus to save the sugar industry has created a path of sustainability and profitability for farmers and millers alike. The board has acknowledged the contributions from the Fiji Sugar Corporation and says the projects supported by the European Union are tracking well. And we now join Rocco from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. A quick look at the markets. Asian stocks opened mix as concerns linger over the impact of potential global trade restrictions. Chinese assets will be in the spotlight again with both the currency and stocks under pressure. Elsewhere, the pound lost some ground as a new Bank of England member spoke about the risks of raising interest rates too fast. U.S. consumer confidence eased in June and slipped to 126.4 while consumer sentiment on current economic conditions slightly changed from May. Closer to home, New Zealand's monthly trade balance surged to a surplus of $294 million, which is higher than the average monthly surplus in the last five months. Overall exports were up $509 million to $5.4 billion, with meat exports having the largest increase while value of total imports rose $277 million. And that's all from HFC Bank. Thanks, Rocco. Taking a look at today's currency exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar. Our dollar rose against the Chinese yuan, the Aussie and the Kiwi dollar, as well as the euro and the Japanese yen. As for the commodities market, oil prices rose to close at 70.73 a barrel. Gold was down to close at 1,258 an ounce, and silver was down seven cents to close at 16.28 an ounce.
Ingrain, Fiji. Tonight, the Fiji Roads Authority will carry out maintenance on 19 roads in Suva to enhance traffic flow. This will be part of the Suva Arterial Road Upgrade Project. Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says more than 17 kilometres of road will be repaired in a few months. Moore says these roads need attention, immediate attention, and the authority will put out a tender by next month. Right, Sarup 2 has gone through the entire design stage. There's 19 roads in Sarup 2. Uh, that's been done in coordination with the Asian Development Bank and the World Bank. So we've done our design and there's a kind of due diligence process we go through now with the, with the ADB and the, and the World Bank. Um, and that's in progress right now. It's getting very, pretty positive. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Argentina sneak through to last 16. And so Akula eager to play in front of home crowd. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rock in Lombasai. I'm Sona Min, Osori Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm a Baba Singh Alliance, Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The Chiefs Fijian forward Peter Gassoakula hopes to do all it takes to earn a spot in the starting lineup for the Super Rugby Clash against the Highlanders in Suva this Saturday. Soakula, who was greeted by family and friends upon arrival today, looks forward to playing, for, playing in front of them at home for the first time in the Chiefs jersey. Meli Tavanga reports. The familiar faces with Mbola smiles was something Peter Gassoakula was looking forward to when he landed with his teammates at the Nosori International Airport this afternoon. Coming here in Fiji and play in front of the family, and I'm so happy to see them here waiting for me. So Akula knows impressing these selectors won't be easy. Every week has just been a tough competition in training, but I'm just doing my best and trying to get a chance and uh, play in the Saturday. The former Fijian basketball international has arranged transport for his village in Tangange, Nandronga, to come and support them on the They've been hiring a two bus come up and watch the game. Inside. I am a proud father, seeing my son coming to play here with one of the top super rugby team from New Zealand is something we will cherish. The Chiefs came here in the last two years as the host, but this year will be different as they will play as visitors. The game kicks off at 7.35 p.m. Saturday. The gates will open at 4 p.m. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Marcos Rojo scored a fine late volley to send Argentina through to the last 16 of the FIFA World Cup with a dramatic 2-1 victory over Nigeria. Argentina will now progress to the next round to meet tournament favorites France on Sunday. Germany will need to beat South Korea tomorrow morning by two or more goals to firmly secure its place in the last 16, while coach Joachim Lowe admits that the dramatic nature of the victory over Sweden has lifted his team. He insists they still have work to do. With Brazil hoping for a win over Serbia to book its place in the knockouts, coach Tite is asking fans not to expect star player Neymar to take full responsibility that it does. He adds that the side will come out firing and will hope to grab a win to avoid, to avoid rather a potentially early exit from the World Cup. Switzerland is targeting maximum points over Costa Rica in their final group stage match tomorrow to push them to the top of their group. While the two sides will be meeting for the third time, it will be the first at a major tournament. Video assistant referees have dominated World Cup discussions with the officials upstairs influencing a lot of results. That's it from Sports Tonight. Catch Angie later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful. Take a look at the volcano in Indonesia that burns blue. That's coming up. Lawang Golesenia, Obama kita kena kas, dorong orang lebih nak kerja untuk rejo tujuan, nanti mui bisi. Ayah Obiniana, kita berorong untuk rejo tujuan, nanti mui bisi, ini nak toka. Gua tu ilai saya ingat toka, 
Rong Robin na nahera makawa ina Radio Fiji One eh, hinga toka. Radio Fiji One non domo eviti. Apple's preview of what iOS 12 can bring is here, if you're okay with installing a beta. It's time for Weather with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the Weather World. We're in for more gloomy conditions, but the good thing is the grey clouds are clearing thanks to the winds, which means we could have great weather. And on other side of things, we are a day away from the long weekend. Cheers to that. Taking a look in the west for today, moderately sunny with light showers expected. Eastwards from Pek Harbor to Suva, more of gloomy and a windy one. And up north, a mix of sun and light showers. At sea, southeast winds gusting to 25 knots, rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 12.59 p.m. with high tide at 6.28 a.m. Sunrise at 6.37. For tomorrow, there isn't much sign of, sh of shower, sorry. so we are good for a clear Thursday. Tomorrow's temps is getting cooler, so the temperatures will fluctuate. And looking further on to Friday, yay to cool and a calm day. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Sorry, I'm Rita. That's your long weekend fever going on. <laughs> and in Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked what are your expectations from the match between the Chiefs and Highlanders? I go for the Chiefs because uh, there are a few uh, all backs uh, squalling it. I think the Highlanders are going to win because uh, they have a uh, few Fijian players there. I'll be cheering uh, Chiefs uh, because. Uh, my cousin is uh, playing uh, for Chiefs, Peter Gas. I think uh, this uh, game on Saturday will be a tough one. I'm uh, cheering for Chiefs. Um, Sokol is my brother. And my expectation for this uh, Saturday, Chiefs are going to win. Recapping the main stories, race and religion being used for politics, says PM. Sadelpa to solve the internal bickering during AGM. A new budget to continue building on opportunities created. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, should the recent drug bus serve as a warning to would-be traffickers? Visit our FBC website to answer. And before we go, our shot of the day, sent in by Joseph Maitonga. The picture was taken from a farm in San Beto Nandi, overlooking the farm. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable week. Bye for now. मैं नवनीत नन नंबोलुम बुआ से जैसे फ्रेंडी नोट मशहूर है वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगापुर के टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देश